Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Career Australia Season 2 where we talk to industry experts and professionals from various backgrounds because here we are on a mission to decode and understand the current happenings in the market with regards to opportunities for job seekers and students alike. On today's episode, what do I say? There's absolutely no better way and no better guest to kickstart this season. He is the epitome of brilliance, managing director and founder of the HCI group that consists of IHNA, IHM, yes. Mr. Vijo Kundamparatha. Thank you so, so much for joining us on our show today. Absolute pleasure to be talking to you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Yeah. Nursing is human service, considering the factors that no other healthcare professional has such a far-reaching and broad effect and role to play. Uh, because nurses care for the patients, they educate them, uh, they talk about injury, they talk about illness, they are always there at every stage of recovery of a patient, yes. right? As I talk to you being the founder and the managing director of an institution that creates and educates and encourages people to get into this noble profession, um, I personally am really curious to know more about nursing. And I'm sure there are so many out there wanting to know more about the courses and how can they benefit after coming to Australia, migrating from another country, right? Um, so as long as I have done my research, sir, international students or international medical healthcare professionals having a degree overseas coming to Australia would have to get their qualifications um, assessed or verified by an authoritative board in the country, correct? Yes. Now, um, please help me through how is it similar or different to nursing, if at all they have a degree overseas in nursing and they want to migrate to Australia and start working in the field. Okay. So our college, IHNA, yeah. we started bridging program in 2007 and uh, we were running it for many years and then we did the move program moved to higher education so in the last three years we actually run the program in uh, institute of health and management or ihm okay. so we have trained more than twenty thousand nurses wow. from overseas from various countries okay. to study through our colleges and they're all working in australia in uh, different uh, hospitals or nursing homes across australia Great. and I can be proud to say that our graduates now, many of them not only working in the clinical area, yeah. they also become managers, directors, and you know, they are in the various levels. So they, <laughs> they progressed a lot. Nice. Some of them also completed their PhD in nursing wow. and uh, doing uh, different projects in the industry. Great. So nurses have much more opportunity than bedside nursing or clinical nursing alone. Mm. Because Australia is a place where Nursing is a profession, mm. professional qualification and get high regard and uh, Australia recognize nursing and the police as the one of the most respected profession. Wow. So the respect for nurses in Australia is much higher compared to many other parts of the world. Great. So any nurse coming to Australia can expect a you know, lot of respect and regards for them and their Great. career opportunities to progress further if yeah. they wish to study further. Great. Australian nursing is very much based on education. Yeah. So the knowledge has to grow yeah. along with your skill sets. So they need to keep updating themselves with every other system and technology that comes up that's, in the sector, yes, is it? That's one aspect. But yeah. again, their nursing knowledge itself, okay. doing post-graduation or master's or doctorate programs. So yeah. they're always upgrading themselves. Great. To them, because the, the expectation of nurses in Australia is also very high. Okay. Not just only uh, looking after the patients in terms of skill sets, but they also advocate for patients. Yeah. If a doctor make a mistake or any other professional person also makes some, so they're part of the whole healthcare team. Totally. They advocate for the patient. They should have the knowledge in every aspect of it. Yeah. So the Australian nurses enjoy you know, a lot more uh, uh, freedom and respect and every aspect of it. Yeah. That comes with knowledge level. Yeah. Without knowledge, you can't have advocating, advocating for others or anything. Totally. So in order to learn, you need to continue learning. Definitely. So looking at the whole Australian nursing situation or the requirements, 
Same time, the bridging program now moved to new assessment system, which is exactly what is happening in the UK today. Right. They based, they call it outcome-based assessment, okay. which include two component. Mm -hmm. One is the knowledge test, mm -hmm. which is Australia adopted NCLEX RN. Mm -hmm. NCLEX RN is the exam for which is used in America, Canada for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Recently, it is also adopted in uh, New Zealand. Okay. Now, Australia adopted that. So, NCLEX RN test will give them the knowledge level, you know, verifying their knowledge level. And the second thing is, they need to pass a OSCE, Objective Structured Clinical Examination, which is, again, I think is a important step towards testing their skill sets. Okay. So, you should have skills level, you also have knowledge level. Okay, skills and, and knowledge. Knowledge. Right. And the third component is, yeah. they have to have the English level. Okay. Communication, Communication skills. So the English level is tested by ILTS or equivalent like OET, PT, everything in uh, seven score. Totally. ILTS requirements are there, which is there for last four or five years, which okay. is actually very good. Okay. Uh, we are able to bring NACE to the required score. Mm -hmm. But the requirements now change from first to English requirements to English requirement the last requirement when they have to prove at the time of registration. Okay. So they, they have an overseas qualification and they have a they have intended to come into Australia. The mm. first step is to register uh, start ac up, sub applying to APRA, the regulatory body in Australia for right. nurses regu regulatory body, which in our case uh, our institute supports nurses to do that process. Okay. Because sometimes the initial application itself is a confusion, a lot of uh, requirements are documentation required. So yeah. we have a division called MWT, right, which focusing on that area. Okay. Okay. And then once they get this letter, right. they need to learn towards uh, getting a, a, their NGLEX exam. Okay. So as I mentioned, NGLEX is a testing of the knowledge of nursing, knowledge deep, of nursing. deep knowledge of nursing. Advanced knowledge. Advanced knowledge. Nursing. So we design a curriculum of a course, we call it graduate certificate in advanced nursing. Okay. That course is built in consideration of specialty requirements for nurses in the world now. So we have 13 specialization. Okay, right. So my next question was based on GCAN. So I was uh, actually looking into the website of uh, the ACI group and uh, IHM and IHNA. So I came across this really interesting term, GCAN or GCAN. And it said um, it's the Australian nursing program that also serves as a bridging program right um, and i was really curious to know what is g can g c a n you know um, so it is graduate certification for advanced nursing yeah. is my research right that's correct now you were rightly mentioning about this whole uh, registration process yeah. right so can you throw in some light on this g can and how can one take maximum benefit uh, yeah. having a degree overseas in this the curriculum yeah. we are putting the short form or the name yeah it's graduate certificate in advanced nursing and it's GCAN. Correct. Shortly we call it. Okay. So it's like a motivational speaker. They say you can or I can. Yeah. They know yes, I can, that kind of thing. So we are thinking there's a very complex requirements today in the world okay. for nurses to get international recognition. Mm. So this GCAN is our graduate scan. That's wow. they could pass this uh, exams or any hurdle comes oh, out of the regulatory okay. bodies. No, that actually makes G can guys, G can, <laughs> we can, G can. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So our graduates can. That's what yeah. our goal. Yeah. So the graduate certificate program is developed with a, it's a specializations. Okay. There is thirteen specializations incorporated, including mm -hmm. uh, critical care, men, mental health, and every area. Okay. In terms of uh, this bridging program, we put a name called Australian Nursing Practice as a specialization. Mm. So in that stream of the course, we adopted exactly what we used to teach in a bridging program, okay. which is deepening their nursing level, knowledge level, yeah. along with Australian context. Okay. What they need to practice in Australia was specifically uh, adopted in this curriculum. So this along with we also developed the NGLEX exam testing system or the test system. Okay. So we provide more testing and training to do the test. So okay. the GCAN program will give the units which they have to learn to improve their knowledge level. Hmm. But the, it's also adopted with the NGLEX testing module. Okay. So there is an NGLEX module is added to this course to prepare them. So separate to the course, but okay. we are providing to all the students joining into 
GCAN program. Yeah. So we will teach them the theory modules so they can pass the NCLEX. Okay. Once they pass the NCLEX, they, they have to do a OSCE assessment, right. objective structured clinical examination. Okay. Again, the course have four weeks of simulation lab training in the campuses. We have, okay. uh, we have three locations and six campuses in Australia, including Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. Wow. So students come to there and they can do four weeks of uh, lab training okay. in order to prepare them to the OSCE exam. OSCE exam. So we are exactly following what the OSCE exam is going to be conducted by the APRA, the regulatory body, mm. in our campuses. Okay. So all our campuses been previously used or approved by uh, Australian Nursing and Midwifery Accreditation Council to conduct the bridging program along with OSCE. Right. Okay, so that is the that's a component of uh, OSCE is adopted to the new GCAN program. Right. Then we also thought they also need to improve their communication skills. Right. Because why when they go for the OSCE examination, mm. the patient, the actor, acting patient right. will be some same like a uh, fragile totally. patient. Totally. They won't be speaking the normal way of English speaking. So people need to understand what the patient talking. In, in when they have sick. Just like an actual patient. Actual patient. There'll be someone yes. who's acting as an actual patient and in the testing. Lab, in the laboratory. Yeah, in the laboratory. So we right. thought about it and we thought maybe the nurses need to get some work experience in a aged care facility or Correct. nursing homes. Yeah. So that will also give them an opportunity to speak to the elderly or patients in the mm. facilities. So we adopted that again. They working and observing what the nurses do mm -hmm. in the facilities. That way, they get understanding of how the healthcare system works. So this again helps them to pass the OSCE exam. Totally. So we added four weeks of uh, uh, this uh, work placement into this course. Okay. So this course is specifically built to meet the requirements of APRA for getting registration Beautiful. from the starting from initial application process ongoing theory to build their capability to Great. pass the NCLEX exam nice. but before the actual exam we give them mock exam in our college on top then they come to practice the OSCE training yeah. then we send them to practice in the simulation uh, the actual workplaces learn about the current practices wow. so they definitely can pass the test that's in, definitely need to pass that's what we preparing G them g can yes, our graduates definitely. can so some of our students who joined this course yeah. actually call this as the new bridging program right so that's how it is that's how so, i came from yeah. yes bridging program bridging program right. so it previously in australia you finish a bridging program you get registration directly okay you don't have to go through a national exam okay so this national exam is adapted only now and our college is prepared this course to meet that requirements and wow. our students calling our course as a new bridging program. Great. IHNA IHM has actually built a whole course with units that helps the students yeah. to build the so-called portfolio or their whole you know, skill sets depending on the NGLEX examination, the AFRA registration. OSCE examination yeah. and a lot more practice into yeah. it, right? That's correct. Which is, which is so interesting. I think uh, building something from the scratch is, is so important for someone who's actually, you know, who's having absolutely no idea of how the healthcare system works in Australia. That's right. Yeah. So this this sounds so good. I'm sure there are so many out there actually looking, already googling www.ihm.com.au. No, no, to, edu uh, I, IHM. Sir, please go ahead with it. www.ihm.edu.au. This is the website you need to go and check for GCAN, considering that it ha it is completely uh, a holistic procedure into wanting to migrate to Australia and starting your service, your noble service for humanity and the society, right? Yeah. Like you rightly mentioned about the AFRA registration, um, I want to know more details on this whole registration process considering that, you know, it's one of the key requirements yeah. um, after the GCAN program, correct? So could you just help us with the yeah. APRA registration? The initial application to the APRA, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, basically they have to submit a 
request uh, application form okay. along with all the current uh, qualifications and the experience and documentation mm -hmm. and they need to do some verification from the uh, registration body to APRA directly. Okay. So once that is been done they will be able to get a letter to say they have to do the NGLEX exam. Next step is basically they have to once they pass the exam they have to progress to the next level which is the OSCE exam. So once they that's the next hurdle. So once they pass the OSCE exam, mm. then, the, then they can submit the registration application, the right. final documentation mm. to APRA. Okay. At that time, they also need to provide their English scores, which should be IELTS 7 in or OETB okay. or PT equivalent score 65, right. everything in all the modules. Okay. That's the current requirements. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. G can guys, graduates can and from yes. IHNA, IHM, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, sir. So I was just uh, going through this uh, really interesting statistics uh, by James Cook University. You also mentioned about it uh, initially when you were answering the first question. Nursing is the largest healthcare profession in Australia. Yeah. Now, contrasting to this, it also mentioned how there is increasing demand and not as much supply for nurses, right? Yeah. It says that Australia's demand for nurses will significantly exceed its supply with a projected shortfall of approximately 85,000 nurses by 2023 or 1,25,000 nurses by 2030. Yes. Now this statistics is a little worrying uh, when you think about it and now help me through this of how we can improve the situation as an individual. Now that is one part of the question but the second part is how can people overseas take advantage of the situation considering yeah. that there is so much demand and absolutely no supply right yeah. so can you just you know help us yeah. through how can we take advantage and how can we help the situation as an individual actually nursing shortage is not only in australia it's okay. global now right due to the covid it's actually increased globally okay. so nursing demand is everywhere it is in the whole world. Mm. So I think creating more nursing jobs or nurses is or developing more trained nurses will be a challenge for every government everywhere in the world. Mm. Australia has the same similar situation. So what I mean definitely Australia will be uh, supporting migration which is there for many years which we are doing for last 17 years. Yeah. And I think it will continue to be available for international nurses who wish to come to Australia. Okay. But of course, uh, there is a lot of hurdles in terms of language requirements, all these test processes and uh, processes to go through. Definitely. That is the biggest hustle for anybody who wish to be in Australia. Yeah. And HCA or IHM is positioned ourselves yeah. to support nurses through that process. Mm. So we have uh, created all the required support system. And the program is, once they come, go through our program, I believe they could not only work in Australia, hmm. they could also work in elsewhere. Okay. Like a similar situation is required in UK and other countries as well, like USA, Canada, New Zealand, all these countries have this almost similar requirements. So if somebody comes through our program, we will bring them to the next level where they meet all the requirements of Australia, yeah. that will also meet their requirements globally. Globally. So, uh, sorry to cut you here. You were rightly mentioning about how US, UK, Australia and New Zealand have the same examinations as that's well. That's correct. So once they take up this course at IHNA, IHM, I'm sure they can actually, you know, practice elsewhere like you rightly mentioned with the same examinations. That's correct. Right? And I believe uh, this is a small six months or one semester course. Okay. The, the opportunity for nurses who wish to upgrade okay. this because the course requirements only IELT 6.5. Mm. So they can join the course, they can study the course, so they improve their language skills as well. Yeah. And uh, we also offer a English training, mm. uh, which is uh, uh, called uh, English for Academy Purpose, which is somebody with IELT 6 also can join this program and they can do that uh, 10 weeks program, then they can continue with the GCAN. But okay. that 10 weeks course could be done overseas online as well. Okay. And that English course we also brought in IELTS training mm. or we got a uh, IELTS mock test built into the program. 
So okay. the students normally do multiple time English test. And each right. time it costs $300 or more for them. So right. we thought about the students and we created the mock test in the system. It's technological wow. advancement. We done a computer aided test system okay. where where students can undertake the test and they can see where they stand in each module. Multiple times. Multiple times. Nice. So that will help them to save a lot of money going to actual test to do and identify. So these are all components we built in to help the students to make sure that they come to us, they get everything they need mm. in order to get through this whole process. Right. So uh, the, the, my concept is basically we can't solve the nursing needs of the world, but we could help nurses to grow or improve their skills Definitely. and knowledge and make them ready to work in any part of the world. Definitely. So they may want to work in Middle East or they may be already working in Middle East. Yeah. So I have looked at the condition where they work in Middle East. Yeah. If a nurse is already working in Saudi Arabia or okay. other place, they have an ambition to grow in their career. They, are, they also look forward to working elsewhere in the future if they wish to. So this GCAN program, what we built is, they could study the theory online. Mm. They don't have to lose their job currently, wherever they are in. Okay. But we will prepare them for the English because many of them are not confident about their language level. Yeah. So they can get training on language same time. Totally. In online mode. Yeah. So normally, example, if you take a Saudi nurse, they work in there, maybe only shift and they have a lot of free time. Yeah. So online course give them that flexibility to study Great. from anywhere. And once they complete the theory part, one time they want to come to Australia to do OSCE exam. Yeah. They can take that for, you know, like a six weeks leave or something. They can come right. and do while they are taking annual leave or something. And they could finish the OSCE training maybe two weeks and they can finish the exam. And if yeah. they pass, they can go back and get the registration process. Yeah. Once they've done that, in future, if they wish to come to Australia or maybe want to go to another country in the world, mm. they have the opportunity. They have the passport to travel. Right. So, in reality, the idea is basically provide various visa options, flexibilities, yeah. meeting every needs of the students or nurses globally. Right. And even if they don't want to come to Australia and work, okay. this course gives them a postgraduate certificate level. Totally. So, in the Middle East or many other countries, as far as I know, if they have a diploma level or GNM nurses, mm -hmm. their qualification is not accepted to be continuous nurse. Okay. So we have some students from Qatar recently right. and they done our course in right. graduate certificate program Yeah. and uh, the, the hospital system they are already accepted that as a equivalent or beyond wow. uh, bachelor's qualification. Right. So I hope that more hospitals will accept our postgraduate qualification which give them knowledge, skills and language improvements and every aspect of it. Definitely. And I hope that uh, wherever they're working, they may not have to migrate to Australia, yeah. but improve the health system in that country. Definitely. They could contribute towards the country. Yeah. And I believe that is what we're looking for. Definitely. And uh, we are open for feedback and ideas and uh, discussion on this further. If any hospital, any uh, individual people, Definitely. nurses, and uh, my contacts you can share with, <laughs> share with your audience. Definitely. <laughs> I'm really here to know about oh, the needs great. and work around the requirements. Sure. And uh, support the health system in globally. Yeah. Not the aims to migrate nurses to Australia. Australia. Alone. So yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. I think with this whole uh, discussion, I kind of understood that how how this whole profession is so much in demand globally and yeah with the pandemic everywhere the other day i was uh, reading an article by hindustan times which said that you know in order to reach the norms of who india needs three nurses per thousand population but we only have 1.3 nurse yeah. per 1000 population currently having said that oh my god this discussion has been so much of information regarding gcan and how this whole course and uh, process uh, is holistic and wholesome once you take up this course at uh, ihna ihm in australia but having said that you can also work globally and what actually intrigued me while you were talking about this is that 
how much thought you have put in sir that you know you were literally telling me that you know they can actually take six weeks of leave and you know they can uh, go through this course and come to australia and do the certification this is what makes this whole course all the more special and all the more different from so many other courses and institutions thank you so much sir absolute pleasure like i mentioned i'm reiterating time is money time is so valuable thank you for giving us your time no thank you so it's much my for pleasure. coming <laughs> it's my pleasure sapna thank, thank you thank you so thank much you. um yes guys so we can I can, you can, and definitely G can. Uh, having said that, it's time for me to say bye to you. But I am catching up again with you next week with another episode, with another guest, and lots and lots of information. But it's time for me to say bye. Until then, this is Sapna signing off. Adios, amigos.